back in 1892, Camille Flammarion has filled his imaginary Martian canals with water, speculating they may be the rectification of old rivers by the inhabitants for the purpose of general water distribution, and the actual habitation of Mars by beings superior to our own is very probable. Pickering adds fuel to Flammarion's fire, asserting that he has seen 40 lakes. At about the same time, a wealthy, world-traveling American diplomat is feeling like he needs a career change and a personal passion project. Percival Lowell has read Flammarion's books, and he makes plans to look for Martians during the coming opposition of 1894. Pickering helps Lowell rig two telescopes on a hilltop in Flagstaff, Arizona. The new Lowell Observatory is trained on Mars all summer long. At the telescope, Lowell sees what he believes and sketches a complex irrigation system, transporting billions of gallons of melted polar snow to equatorial desert oases the irrigated agriculture projects of an advanced race. But during the same opposition, Edward Barnard, wielding the California Lick Observatory's larger refracting telescope, cannot find a single straight line anywhere on Mars. And when the Lick's William Campbell examines Mars with a spectroscope, he sees not a trace of water in the atmosphere. English astronomer Edward Maunder demonstrates how straight lines on Mars could be optical illusions. Undeterred, Percival Lowell sprints across America on a lecture tour, promoting his book named simply Mars. A story-thirsty public buys his tales of Martian waterworks by the thousands. In 